This is TJ Rivera, minor league coach with the Cleveland Guardians, and you're watching the Legends on Deck podcast with host Brian Koss and David Condit. Jair Jurgens took a no hit bid into the seven. He takes a two nothing lead into the bottom half. Into left. Ball game. A one hit shutout for Jair Jurgens. Hey everyone, welcome to uh, episode 61 of the Legends on Deck podcast. I'm David Condi, and if you can see, sitting to my other side, normally would be Brian Koss, but today Dylan Spaulding is going to step in for Brian today, and Dylan is a huge contributor on the website. Uh, he's been with us since 2019. He has some great baseball content on the site, um, and he also has his, uh, his own Spotify uh, show called The Flow Show. So Dylan, thank you for stepping in for Brian today. David, thanks so much for having me and very excited to uh, have our special guest on today and, and looking forward to getting to talk to him. Yeah, definitely. So we are excited that today we have a eight-year MLB veteran, uh, all-star pitcher, Jaya Jurgens, um, and also we have executive VP of baseball operations, co-owner and vice chairman of the board with Baseball United, John Mietrich. Gentlemen, thank you for the show. Thank you for coming on the show today. Thank you. It's an honor. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, let's get it done. Let's go. Let's go. So, Jay, we're going to ask you first, your first question. Um, mm -hmm. Growing up in Santa Maria Corazal, I said that right, right, Corazal? Correct, correct, oh, correct. Um, can you share and, uh, with us? Before, before, before you yeah. keep going, we got to correct it. It's Pura Piedra. Or, oh, they had it on. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. It's fine. It's neighborhood. It's neighborhood. It's it's neighborhood. It's okay, perfect. I'm glad you changed that. We're going to have to tell them to go and change that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, growing up in your town, um, mm -hmm. what when did you know you wanted to play baseball, and what mm -hmm. was someone they looked you looked up to that kind of inspired you to play the game? Uh, baseball is a family affair back home for me. Um, grow up, um, my dad played. Uh, he played uh, most of like softball. He played a little bit in a higher level back home, but um, I think he dedicated more on softball. And um, I had an older brother too that um, I grew up. Uh, I admire, you know, um, follow his full step, try to be as best he, as him. Um, grew up on the field every Saturday, Sunday. You know, we, uh, if my brother had a game at 10 o'clock, I'll be there at nine and leave there at six o'clock. And um, I, like I said, I grew up on the field as, since I was four. And I would leave like I was uh, playing the game, like all dirty and, um, my shoes sometimes we broke and my dad would get mad at me about it. But um, basically, just like uh, it was my life uh, growing up and um, till this day. Well, that's good. That kind of reminds me of my days growing up. We didn't ever left the field. I mean, I'm a, I'm a lot older than I look, but yeah. we didn't ever left the baseball field. We stayed on it all day long. 100%. That's all I wanted to do back then. 100%. But that's all. Awesome. We used to play, I don't know, we used to play the um, the cap game. Like, oh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I like um like I have a lot of story, man. I just grew up like people say like um you like the beach. I I cannot say no, but I like to feel better than the beach for sure. So I'm assuming your island Curacao is surrounded by all water. Correct. You can't correct. miss the beach. It's just right there. No, you drive by, you see water all the time, twenty four seven. That's awesome. Jair, I want to I want to go in. So you have the distinct honor of being the first pitcher from Curacao to make it to the majors in, in 2007. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that's a pretty big honor. And obviously it's pretty big for, for your country as well, which has mm -hmm. really grown as a baseball community. Um, how did your debut help add to the growth of, you know, 
people from your country wanting to get into baseball and 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 wanting to you know play this game um definitely definitely i got to say thanks to the guys who came before me and the guys who opened door for Andrew Jones you know I, I need to give him credit um for what he did in the World Series pulled more eyes on us you know and um and um, when i got called up we in a way had a drought of players coming to the big leagues and even the prospects signing. And um, I think uh, coming up, uh, I think uh, those years uh, for sure, like uh, the day I was pitching, the, the street used to be quiet, they say. Like everybody would try to go to a bar or be at home, try to watch my game. And um, it, it's an honor to be able to do that and be able to like um, – make your own island, like stop their own life and like pay attention to what you're doing because you put in their hometown on the map too. And um, and I was able to be part of history, not only being the first um, pitcher, but uh, being the first uh, pitcher and a hitter coming from the same island, especially from Curacao, when I faced Andrew. Then um, it, it's an it's, uh, it's, uh, honor and I'll be able to be the first pitcher, but more is an honor to keep open doors and keep helping the youth from Curacao and, and keep putting my, my island on the map. You were, you were a part of the world baseball classic, not only from the beginning of it, but mm -hmm. you also were a part of it as well this past season in 2023 um, mm -hmm. to, to kind of see not only how Curacao, but even the Netherlands being a part of the, uh, the Netherlands team, mm -hmm. how has the passion and support of baseball within those two countries, obviously with so much are attached between those two countries. How has that grown over the years since you started playing in the baseball classic? Then to obviously this past year where it seems like international baseball has really grown. Um, I think uh, baseball classic is, is uh, something special um, in the way you go. Like if you now, you can see that major league is changing is accepting more stuff. But when I was coming up, it's everything was like business, like respect each other and stuff like that. And the classic, when it came up for the first one, I was able, like luckily enough to be part of it. They opened the door for the Caribbean side of the way of baseball to be able to be on national TV. And um, being a part of that and seeing all the guys who came before me, like I mean, you say Robert Einhorn, who was the first Dutchman got the big leagues, like came up with the idea to join all the the kingdom together and make a special squad. Um, since he brought that idea, everybody buy in. Uh, I was a little kid when Netherlands um, beat Cuba first time in the Olympics, and um, I think um, at that time everybody was signing. But well, the next goal was to be part of the national team. And uh, it, like, it's just an honor, like uh, representing the kingdom, representing my, my island again, be a part of my, my friend again, you know, not be able to play them for so many years and be able to wear the same uniform and pull for the same thing. Um, it's a blessing. Um, and uh, baseball and, and, and classic um, is something that uh, I'm always gonna be close to my heart and um, like, I think uh, classic need to be more often and put like that. <laughs> well, I, I think I the one thing on that is that the classic, you know, when I watched Team Puerto Rico play and all these teams and the excitement, I mean, we saw it locally here and the music and the excitement. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. normal baseball game's not like that, right? No, then that passion yeah. is is unbelievable it's, to watch. It's, it's different. And then I'm not going to lie. That's why I told John, I think, while we had a, a baseball united, it's almost the same feeling, man. It's like you know, while we have a baseball united, that everybody pulled, especially that trip we made to Dubai, everybody was pulling for the same goal. And uh, like I told John, I, I don't think I've ever felt that in all my career of baseball that everybody pulling for the same thing. It, even like the other team was pulling for us, and we were pulling for them. It, it was amazing. It was amazing. It was amazing to watch too. That was that was an awesome time. For sure. 
Jay, you 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 obviously mentioned being a part of Baseball United, and and this past winter you were drafted into the league, um, mm-hmm. and obviously this is another great international opportunity as well, being a part of Baseball United. Um, mm-hmm. How do you feel Baseball United is really a perfect fit for you at this point in your career? You know, you've had a long, extensive career, but mm-hmm. like at this point in your career, how do you feel like Baseball United kind of fits perfectly for where you're at now as a player? Uh it, it comes with both sides, man. It comes as a player and as a, a mentor. You know what I mean? Um, just uh, every time, as a, as a professional athlete, you want to keep the uniform as long as possible. That's number one. And uh, um, another thing, having the chance to play in front of your, your kids, your family, is always something special. Then for me, that side, like, uh, I'm really glad and uh and uh, something i told john to i said thank to john like 20 times i think in dubai because he made one of my dreams come true and um i think basically united actually like i think people not i think people will only focus on the big names that was mm-hmm. there but be able to give kids who never uh, have a chance to be a pro or play with high class baseball players and being there, you can see these guys' eyes light up. And they were walking to say thank you every second they had to everybody. And I think it makes it bigger than the, actually the game. S- giving these kids chance who never actually had a chance to get drafted or don't have chance for professional scouts to see them and for them to wear the same uniform and share the same feel as Robert Cano, Didi Simmons, and all of them. I think um, uh, I think it makes it it makes it special. The league can be it can open doors for everybody, not only me, but guys who get the chance to be a part of this league. I think it, it can be something really special, and we think it's gonna be special too. Absolutely, yeah. I, I think it's really exciting to see what the league is doing, and um, you know, what opportunities do you feel like the league will offer for, for the players, you know, who maybe are veterans or even, as you mentioned, the younger guys as well. I think they're the, the opportunities are limitless. It uh, it's, 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 it's because it's, it's like um, everybody tuning in, in those two games. You know what I mean? And just imagine, like I always said, you got to trick one scout, one team to get the opportunity. And I always say like in baseball, you can have to tell it. But if you don't have the luck on your side, the talent's not going to take you anywhere. And you never know with a good um, AD or a good uh, um, appearance on the mound or a dead even catch can get these guys a winnable job or a Mexico job or even a Japan, Taiwan. There's a lot of leagues these days that um, this guy can uh, impress somebody for to get a chance to be a professional baseball player. Awesome. Um, we're gonna switch one quickly to John. I'm gonna mm-hmm. go back to John sitting there very patiently, just watching, and enjoying it all. So I kind of want to go in the mix here. Um, John, so back in November, we had um prior to the baseball show showcase, we had your partner Cash Shake on the podcast. He shared so many great things about what you guys were doing. I mean, God is so excited to know, man, this is something great coming on. We were so excited to get to the showcase. Showcase came, you know. Where were you, okay, what were you able to learn from that event, from that night, um, regarding the market's passion of baseball in that area? Well, first off, being that you had cash on, uh, you know, before the event, you're not going to be impressed with my eloquence, (laughs) uh, for sure, (laughs) right? Uh, And and you guys taught me something about JJ here, about Jair. I didn't realize he was the first pitcher from Curacao ever to play in the big league, so... uh, Big up, JJ. I didn't realize that. <laughs> that. But, um, you know, what an, what a surreal experience. What an opportunity to be, you know, on the ground in Dubai, uh, November 24th and 25th. It was like living a dream, quite frankly, right? You know, when you think about what we've had to overcome and really to what had to go right, how many cash often says, how many miracles had to happen for us to throw the first professional pitch in the history of the game on the Arabian Peninsula, like literally the stars had to line up. And, you know, so just really it was a pinch yourself moment that am I really living this right? And to share that with the likes of JJ and the rest of the players, Cash and our ownership group was just an unbelievable experience. 
You know, when you look at what we were trying to do as Baseball United under Cash's leadership, you know, was trying to prove our concept, right? Prove that we could play professional baseball in the desert, right? So first, when you look at what I do every single day, my responsibility is baseball operations, right? So procuring the players. To see the players on the field for the first practice was just an unbelievable uh, moment to live that, that, you know, this was something we dreamed two years prior. And then to see the, you know, the first pro players walking out onto that field uh, during the first practice was special. So that I think was box check number one. We had the players on the ground. The second piece was looking around that, you know, we created, we built a professional level playing surface on a cricket field, yeah, in the field awesome. you know, and, you know, and, and it's not me because like, you know, my, my um, pinnacle of baseball was like little league all-star and I'm not, and I'm throwing myself in the all-star game. I don't think I even made it, but nonetheless, <laughs> you know, when you got a guy like JJ who pitched in the big leagues pitched in the all-star game, he, you know, he opened up uh, uh, the first game and for a guy like on his level to say, man, this is like one of the best mounds I ever threw off of. Right. One couldn't understand what we had to do to get that to become reality. I mean, I'm, we're talking about airlifting dirt, right? Airlifting dirt because they didn't have clay. There's no dirt, right? There's sand, but silt being shipped on, on boats from Pakistan and India. Then when we realized that the clay content in, in that we brought over from India and, and Pakistan wasn't up to the level of a professional infield. We could use it in some ancillary spaces or, or locations on the field, but we needed a, like a higher clay content or more pure clay content, if you will. When we figured that out, like a few weeks before the games, we literally had to put into, into place an airlift of dirt to come from the States in order to finish out the build out. So second was the reality of seeing that field, you know, in the condition that it was, that was box check number two. Um, obviously first pitch, but really what, what was important from, from the learnings was, man, there really is a market and there really is a fan base for the game of baseball here. I mean, cash using, you know, his skills and the rest of our owners group and the players and everyone involved with baseball United, I mean, cash led the charge to go. And I quote here, we were able to, um, secure 13 different broadcasters. And we will broadcast in 127 countries globally, 127 countries. I mean, this is World Series level stuff. This is Super Bowl level stuff for our first two showcase games. Obviously, the level of talent that we had on the field was as high as you're going to get. Um, and, and we had a, a hell of a quality product that we put on the field. So that helped in, in obviously uh, securing those deals. So we're really proud of that. When you look at the fan base that attended the games, you know, there was thousands of people at those games. We were only given um, about five weeks. And in that part of the world, everything's super regulated. If you guys don't know that, and if your fan base and your and your and your 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 listening audience doesn't know, that part of the world is extremely, extremely regulated. We were only given the approvals to sell our tickets only about five weeks in advance. So we didn't necessarily hit the exact numbers that we wanted because of the short window that we had to sell. But I'll tell you, we had thousands and thousands of fans in attendance for those games. So we were really, really uh, pleased with that. And then I touched on the broadcast, but you know, the, the reach of the broadcast or the scope of the broadcast, but I think what's important and, and David, you had mentioned that you kind of watch the games um, look was the quality of the broadcast, you know, to have swish on there as the yeah. color Terry, uh, to have the level, I mean, we talked to a lot of guys who played at the highest levels for a long time. And every single one of those guys came back to us, um, you know, with the same feedback that that was huge. That was MLB level type production. Right. And we were proud of that. And we are proud of that. So, you know, when you think about what we were able to accomplish in the time that we have on the cash's leadership with the ownership group, which I mentioned, the most legendary ownership group in all the sports. Uh, a quick uh, congrats to one of our co-owners and uh, board members, Adrian Beltre, for for less than 24 hours ago being, you know, um, immortalized into Cooperstown and as a member of our Baseball United family. So that's 
how how we roll. So he's the third uh, yeah. Hall of Famer that is now aligned with with us as a company, and that's our third Hall of Famer that's on our board of directors, which I am you know honored and privileged. Uh, to be the vice chairman of. So it was a long-winded answer, but I think that it was important to give the the breadth and scope of who we are and what we're doing and building with guys like Jair who are just salt of the earth people. Well, going, going touching real quick on your broadcast, you did have the uh, number one uh, player in cricket was on the broadcast. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so so to to hear his angle on the game. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's such a cool experience. So Shohei Bakhtar is, is actually the guy who... First guy ever to throw 100 miles an hour in cricket, right? And he's still the only guy actually to throw 100 miles an hour in cricket. He's actually one of our global ambassadors because one of the things that we're passionate about doing, although there is actually a really sizable, avid baseball fan base in the region, right? So in the GCC, in the Middle East and the subcontinent of, you know, the, the subcontinent of India, South Asia, there's a sizable baseball population fan base, about 60 million or so avid baseball fans. However, when you think about the, the 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 big piece of the puzzle here, there's one billion cricket fans, enough, you know, the number one bat and ball sport living in that part of the world, one billion. And a lot of what Baseball United is doing and a lot of our proprietary strategies for phase two for the growth of the organization is to try to, you know, inspire some of those cricket fans to, you know, take a dabble in the other bat and ball sport, which we love baseball and, and try to try to build upon that fan base in that regard. Well, I think with genius bringing the uh, number one cricket guy on to kind of be your ambassador and kind of bring that together. Cause then he could bring the fans with him. And once they start to see how great of a game baseball is, they, the interest is going to be there that they're going to just want to come out and check it out. And that's when you're going to grow your fan base. No doubt about it. I mean, I talked about our owners group, but also just, you know, we have two global ambassadors, one of them, Albert Pujols, mm -hmm. and the other one, Shohei Bakhtar. If you think about that, these are two just giants on each hemisphere that represent everything that there is to know about the game of baseball and cricket. So we're really blessed to be able to have them and have them behind our brand and really speaking to what they see on a day-to-day -day basis, inspiring their own fans to come follow what we're doing here. Really a positive disruption in the world of sports. One, one question I want to add to this. How have you built off of that? Like, what do you want to look towards 2004, towards the season? Like, what are you preparing from between now? Because your season starts in November. So what, what are the steps to, to lead towards that? Well, obviously, coming out of the showcase, we had to really assess and kind of lessons learned, best practices. You know, what can we do to get what worked, what didn't work? What do we need to stop? What do we need to start? So we're kind of in that phase right now of just peeling the onion back and trying to look at what exactly is needed to elevate the experience, elevate the show, elevate the level of play, elevate the fan experience, right? So when you think about what we're, what as, as the EVP of baseball operations, it's all about the players on the field, right? It's all about bringing the highest level of players in there, converting the field. But as the vice chairman under cash who runs the organization from a business perspective and the entire leadership of the organization, you know, as the vice chairman of the board, you know, we're looking at so many different pillars, whether it's fan experience, uh, brand engagements from sponsorship. So there's a different there's a there's a myriad of different um, areas that we really have to focus on in order to elevate um, the overall experience of what we're doing in Baseball United. We're in the process of looking at that and kind of adjusting where we need to and focusing our efforts in other places. Well, you got me excited because I can't wait for the games to start. So I'm like, well, wait a minute. Why can't we just start in January? You know? <laughs> but I know there's a process we got to get to it. So now it's like, keep this anticipation of when, when it's going to start going forward. Yeah, and, and and the other reason for that is, as you can imagine, you know, what we are trying to do as as a new league is bring baseball, the sport we love, to really a new demographic, right? A new part of the world, the white space opportunity where you have avid baseball fans, but they're not necessarily sophisticated baseball fans. And also there's a, the, the vast majority of people living in the region don't have any knowledge or, or, you know, about baseball. So we're trying to grow that fan base. When you look at what goes on here in the United States and let's say in Far East Asia, in Japan with the Nippon League or in Korea, look, they play during the traditional baseball time frame. So, you know, what's a benefit to us is, quite frankly, the climate. You, We couldn't play our games 
during the time of year that you mentioned during the regular traditional baseball season, because it's 130 degrees in the desert at that time. So what we are able to do is we are able to kind of bookend the traditional baseball season and play in the traditional winter league months, right? So we don't identify or define ourselves as a winter league because we believe that the the market that we're playing in is one of the youngest, fastest growing sports loving uh, demographics on earth in some of the fastest growing economies on earth. So we, we don't necessarily identify ourselves as a winter league, but from a sheerly time of year perspective, that's when we're playing. So although we would love to, to play in January, the players that we're targeting are really those players that would be playing in winter leagues around the world. Look, uh, Jay, I'm sure Curacao, does it get to 123 degrees in the summertime? No, 90, 90, 90 the best, 90. So we can't go, we can't be on the mound in that weather. I think you might melt. I, I think I can handle it. I can handle yeah. it, but but I don't think I want to do it every day when I'm not pitching. <laughs> uh, I have a question here. Uh, you know, heading into the inaugural season, uh, one thing that I have seen, even especially in this interview, is is the connection that uh, John has with you, Jair, and even vice versa. It seems like that the league is very prided on those connections between its players and and the league itself of Baseball United. Uh, so, so first question we'll I'll, we'll go to here to you, Jair, is mm-hmm. you know how does this connection make a league such as Baseball United unique compared to say maybe in the MLB or, or other leagues that you've been a part of? How does that uh, you know connection between the player and the league really make this kind of a unique uh, you know situation and opportunity? It, it's super easy. Uh, like John said, most of the, the co-owners below cash of ex-baseball players, you know what I mean? And I think cash and John and everybody who's running the league, they, the thing, the good thing they do is they listen to the players, to the ex-players and the way they translate the information to us it makes it like a big family. And um, I'm not gonna lie, the, the day we flew in for the supposed original draft day, and we were sitting at Cash um, House, uh, calling the name house and stuff. And hearing Cash talk, hearing everybody who was behind and talk, you can hear and you can feel the passion, the tears, the hard work they did to make this happen. And when you hear that, the only thing as a player and and they explain you step by step, the only thing you do as a player is like when you put that uniform and trying to do the best you can. And I think that's why, like I told you guys, I never felt this in my whole career, even like playing before I was signed, that everybody was like a brotherhood. Everybody was together. Everybody was pushing together the 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 energy on the bus, the energy of every event was a different, it was a different level. And uh, everybody, it was a positive thing. And it's like, that's why I'm so blessed and happy to be part of this family. And it's like something that I, I, I think every time I talk, talk, talk to John, I say, thank you. You know, because even for John, I will not be in this, in this, in this position. I think the one thing that's great that John kind of touched on the names that you have involved in the league and, and the players, you guys are just, you're not, you're coming out like recently playing. You're not just like guys who retired and coming back. You guys Correct. are involved in one of the games. So I have to have your names here coming to Baseball United. That's just going to explode. The people don't want to be a part of it. Correct. It's not guys still recently in the game. Like you said, it's not guys who've been sitting at home for five years, six years coming back. These guys are still like active. I'm in active in Mexico for the last couple of years. Cano been active, like Didi been active in, in, in Mexico. You know, it's like, um, it's just, it's amazing. Like you coming back and seeing the talent and, and another thing too, like we trying to show the world that we still can play on the higher level. You know what I mean? And I think that's why I think everybody is like pulling for each other. So, you know, in a way, and everybody knows, kind of knows, like still trying to come back and, you know, he deserve it, you know, especially the way he's playing right now in, in Dominican um, win the ball, you know, and and it's like everything's happened for a reason, but it's an it's nice to to have this opportunity, like I said in the beginning, still have a jersey on your back, and you can decide when you want to walk away. I think the best thing is you both you all believe in this, you all believe in baseball, <laughs> and you love it, and that's what's making it 
feel real and look real. Just yes, you guys are putting it on the field. It, 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 I think I think is the part of one able to grow the baseball experience over there. And and giving the guys who have a chance never have a chance to be looked at if, uh, from a, a scouting uh, side. And I think when you combine teaching and presenting a game that you love and change your life, makes it easy. You know, it, it's, you stay in what you love and what you grew up to do. Jair, one thing that you kind of mentioned earlier is about how some of the younger players are also coming in and there's guys who are are getting really their kind of maybe first opportunity through this league um, to be able to be kind of one of those guys, as you mentioned, a mentor and to help some of these younger guys, you know, get going with their baseball career. I mean, how gratifying is it that as a player to be able to kind of give back to the baseball community that has given so much to you? You know, uh, I'm just doing what I... uh what I got taught when I got to the big leagues, you know, people getting me on, on my wings, Tim Hudson, Mike Gonzalez, you know, Javier Vasquez, Polanco, or like guys like Manny Ordonez, guys, Gary Sheffield, guys who like teach me the way the road. And, and uh, I think I, for the last past year, talking to current players, that's is leaving the game a little bit because a lot of veterans are being kicked out of, of major league. And I think players of this time are losing their mental side of the game because you can have the talent, but if you not can control your emotion or don't know how to go with the ups and down that like you can't have the talent, but you're not going to survive and uh, try to be part of it. And like, I don't really don't like people, struggle <laughs> you know what i mean baseball is harder enough you know i mean if i can get give him a tip that that can click and have him have success like I, i'm happy with that you know i like to give back like to say baseball gave me a lot and uh, i know it's really hard this everybody has hard time in this game then i don't like people see people doubt themselves or, or or not believe they have the talent enough to be part of this Absolutely. John, that kind of goes into my my question for you, you know, uh, you know, seeing the mix of, of veterans such as Jair and then also seeing some of the young future stars that are coming into this league. Um, how will that connection between the veterans and the future stars help really mold the culture of what this league has? You know, if you think about, you know, what Jair was just talking about, we talked about a bunch of the different, you know, co-owners, legends of the game who are our co-owners, you know, one of the things that Cash really is is clear on is this in many ways is a league for the players, by the players, right? And who better to kind of guide or advise on the way a professional baseball league should run other than the guys who did it at a very high level for a very long time, you know? So if you think about our advisory, so we talked about some of the guys we have you know, involved from an ownership perspective. Three of those Hall of Famers are on our board of directors. So Cash is our chairman of the board. I'm our vice chairman. Three of them are involved in the actual day-to-day operations of the business. Forget the baseball piece of the business of Baseball United from a, a board of directors perspective. And then we also have a committee, a, an ex-players committee. So some of the other player owners who are, you know, former players, owners within Baseball United, like, you know, Felix Hernandez, like Nick Swisher, like Ryan Howard. Those guys are on our board of advisors where they're advising in things like, you know, gameplay, rules and regulations, innovations, right? So they're really advising us on and playing a part in shaping, you know, what the customer and what what the fan sees at the end of the day. Now, particular to your question, how guys like JJ and, and, you know, the likes of him, well, I could sum it up very easily. You know, I had the, the, I had the honor and privilege to be in the clubhouse with these guys, you know, after practices, during practices, after games, before games, that's something you don't normally see, as you mentioned before in, you know, the traditional uh, ranks of baseball, right. Um, You know, ownership and, and, league executives, the clubhouses for the players kind of thing, but we're trying to do things differently here, right? And the players and the team captains, JJ and Robbie Cano, for example, on their team, you know, had an open door where us as 
the the, the league um, executive level were kind of very engaged with them right up until game time, during game time. And I, and I can tell you this, there was two particular situations that kind of occurred to me. And I actually gave a speech on it right before, kind of like a rah-rah chili to speech to get these guys fired up before the game. And it was actually a moment in which we had, so just think about the the roster breakdown. We had 20, we had two different showcase, uh, all-star showcase teams, right? 25 players per team, 21 were former pros, professional players or professional players, I should say. The other four were what we called prospects from the region. We had three kids from India. We had two kids from Pakistan. We had a kid from Sri Lanka. We had a kid from Uganda. And we had a kid from Palestine, Palestine, right? And these are kids who are the best players on their, you know, national teams. Or, you know, the best, the hardest thrower in India, Akshay Moore, throws the ball about 93 miles an hour. But the reality is they haven't had the experience, the exposure, the training that maybe Jair had because he came from the baseball rich environment, a Curacao. So I'll give you an example, a story. This actually happened. So before the first game, we had decided that one of the players brought three pairs of spikes for the Indian kids. They never wore spikes. They never threw off a mound. So we were just going to leave them at their lockers and say, Hey guys, you know, here are your new cleats, here are your new spikes. And Jair says, no, 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 we have to make this like a presentation because I remember the day I got my first spikes. He actually referenced that about him breaking his equipment and his dad, you know, getting upset at him early on in the in, in, in the interview. But so Jair decides that he wants to make this like a presentation from the All-Star team, right? So he gathers everyone around their lockers and presents, you know, these three guys with their spikes and they have tears in their eyes. And what had occurred to me right then was something special. And this is basically, I'm going to summarize the, the, the speech that I gave in the locker room. I, you know, and I said, you know, it doesn't matter where you come from, religion, creed, it, you know, it's all the same. What you put out into the world is what you get back, right? What you reap, you sow, right? So the reality is what these guys are doing and I said this, the pro guys in the room, those 21 pro guys of the 25 have no idea what they're doing right now. And I, you know, summarized it like this. Look, when, you know, Jair could aspire to be a kid in the big leagues because the guys from Curacao who went before him, he talked about that earlier in the call. Mm -hmm. And I kind of said to these guys, I said, guys, what you're not understanding is you're that right now, you're that aspirational piece to these three Indian kids, to the Pakistani kids, to the to the Palestinian kid, to the Sri Lankan kid, to the Ugandan kid. They look at you the same way you looked at Andrew Jones and thought you could make it because he made it. You're that to these guys, right? So that was kind of a, a moment that these guys stepped back and I thought said, wow, you're right. Because all of these guys idolized everyone in that locker room. But it doesn't end there, gents. This is the reality. Those three Indian kids went back to India they're the hope of every single and dream of every single kid in India. That is the reality. I mean, Akshay Moore, a 6'5 pitcher, throws the ball 92 miles an hour. He is he might as well be Jaya Jurgens of India <laughs> because he's walking around giving autographs, taking selfies with kids who recognize him. So now what we've created was, again, you reap what you sow, right? So what you put out into the world, what you get back? You know, JJ trying to give back and all the guys who are, who, who are really – involved with baseball united it's bigger than baseball this is about people it's about reaching people it's about inspiring people to do more than they thought they could do to dig deeper to give more of themselves and it all runs full circle from jair being you know inspired by andrew to then him inspiring akshay moore and sarah gaikwad and then those kids now back on the ground in India and all the other countries that I mentioned, inspiring a generation behind them. So that's what you get all in, you know, and I know my answers are long and you guys probably <laughs> want to cut me off. You want to put my mute button on, but the reality is it's important that you understand that's the full circle. That's what baseball United is all about right then and there. Right. I think that's why Brian and now Dylan, of course, is, is hooked on to you guys and what you're doing. I think that was genius for bringing the young guys in from the different countries, because yes, they are going to go back. And yes, people are going to see that they were on that stage with the pros and the fact that they get to be a part of that. You just opened up 
exactly what you guys want to do. You want to reach the billion fans. Well, you're going to reach the billion fans and probably then some because of what you guys are doing. And on top of that, you guys are showing us all that you're about the game, about the growth, about the players, and not just about, hey, um, I'm going to sign a big contract and I'm going to you know, make a lot of money. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. But what you guys are creating is true baseball, love the game, grow the game, spread the game out, and using the right names, faces, uh, 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 talents, everything you can. I think that's genius what you guys are doing. And we've been, that's why we're so hooked with it. I'm like, man, I got to get my flight next year to uh, Dubai to go watch these games in person because I think what you guys are doing is genius. Well, David, I hope to see you there. Uh, for sure, we're going to put you in a diamond suite if you are. <laughs> uh, but, you know, to, to just kind of parlay off what you just said, you know, one of our, our, our founding members um, is Hall of Famer Barry Larkin, right? And Lark, as one of our co-owners, he's one of our, he's on our board of directors. Um, one of the things that he's so passionate about is the community, is that grassroots development. He often talks, he has a great background where he spent many years working with MLB International. And he's bringing that experience here to Baseball United now. And what he talks oftentimes about is it's not about finding a kid who's talented in a community and plucking that kid out and bringing him to play. What it's about is us embedding ourselves in the community, putting a bat ball and a glove in a kid's hand, inspiring kids to play. That's the sustainability to what we're doing. That's the bottom up approach. So we talked about the professional league that's top down. The bottom up approach is in the communities, building life skills that are bigger than just baseball, because not everyone has Jair's talent. Right. I mean, I do obviously have that <laughs> from a baseball playing perspective, but the reality is, look, I didn't have Jair's arm. I didn't have the mental hardware he mentioned before to play at the highest levels, quite frankly. But my love of the game and the life skills that sports and baseball taught me allowed me to, 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 to build a particular character that's of value now to Baseball United. So it's bigger than baseball. It's about getting into the communities, inspiring people to learn the game, to love the game, put a bat and ball and glove in kids' hands, no matter you know what gender, age, race, call it irrelevant. It's a game for everyone. And that's what we want to promote as Baseball United. Well, that's awesome. Listen, we can talk about this forever. I could be on the show all day long with you guys talking about I love, I love this game. I love everything you guys are doing. But I, we, we don't want to take up, take you guys and be on here all night long. But thank you for being on the show. We really appreciate it. We appreciate you coming on, Jay Jones, and kind of sharing your journey with us. Um, kind of sharing, you know, where it's taking you with Baseball United. So, and John, thank you for your insights on your end. It's been great. Um, we really appreciate that. And right before we end this, I just want to want to share a little bit. Uh, thank you to our uh, sponsor, Easy Mortgage. Thank you. Just let everybody know that anybody around the world, Dubai, anywhere, wants to get a, a Just On Deck shirt. We have it on our website. And thank you, Dylan, for stepping in for Brian today and kind of helping to, to get this going. But once again, guys, thank you very much for being on the podcast today. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. You know, if you guys need another, another host, I'm I'm available. Let me know. I'll call you, I'll call you right away. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. Signing thank off you. on uh, episode 61 of the Legends on Deck podcast. Appreciate you guys.